We have here an iPad Air 3rd generation. We're going to run some tests with external storage, which is natively supported since iOS 13. If you have newer iPad Pros, that's great because they come with USB Type-C out of the box. If you have other iPad models or even the latest iPhone 11 and 11 Pro lineup, you can still take advantage of this feature, but you do have to take some extra steps. You may find cheap lightning adapters, but you have to be extra careful because not everything will work for data transfer. Like this one we have from Rumax. It is a micro USB to lightning port adapter. While it works well for charging, it doesn't do the job for data transfer. So I'll show you right here. We'll try to put a memory card in an OTG card reader. If you try to put it in the iPad Air, it's not going to show you anything. It's not even going to give you a warning. So this one is not recognized at all. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking for third-party alternatives online. There is an official adapter from Apple. It goes by the name Lightning to USB 3 camera adapter. While it gears towards uh, direct use with camera, you can actually use it with several different USB-A devices. So it says on the box USB 3, but it will not give you any more numbers saying how much speed it can deliver. So that's what we're going to find out. There are two ports in here. One is the USB-A port and then the other is the lightning port for pass-through charging. It will also allow you to pump more power for USB devices that will require more power. First test would be with a USB 2.0 device. This one is a USB 2.0 card reader. The next one will be with a USB 3.0 card reader. To test more of the USB 3.0 capabilities, we'll also test with the thumb drive. Lastly, we'll connect directly to this Sony A6000 camera. So the memory card that we have is a SanDisk Ultra that reads at about 80 MB per second. So the reason why we have uh, such a low speed uh, memory card is because the Sony A6000 that I have and the other Sony A5100 that I have has a maximum recording speed of 50 MB per second, which makes this already more than enough. We'll go ahead and start the test with the USB 2.0 card reader with the SanDisk Ultra SD card. As you can see, once we attach, the SD card contents will be seen right here in the locations. The test file that we have is an 8 minute MPEG-4 video, which is about 729 MB. On the timer, we have 50 seconds, so it took that much time to transfer from the SD card to the iPad. The next one is the USB 3.0 card reader, so we'll use the same memory card. Now you will see an error message saying this accessory requires too much power. So this is where the pass-through charging comes in. Once you plug in the lightning cable attached to a charger, it will let you use the USB 3.0 device. Make sure that you're using the original iPad charger, because in my case I tried to charge with an 11 Pro Max charger and it didn't work. So now we'll go ahead and transfer. That's 23 seconds on the clock so it's a lot better than the first test. Now we connect directly with the camera so as you can see it got the same error message but that's because the camera is off. So now we switch it on and there's no more message and it will now show us the contents of the camera itself and the SD card without having to attach the lightning charger so it might vary in your case if you're using a different camera so this one took about 48 seconds a bit closer to the USB 2.0 test lastly we'll test with the USB 3 flash drive this one is again showing us the accessory error message so we will need to attach the charger
this one gave us about 29 seconds as expected closer to the USB 3 card reader results. So based on the results that we got, we can assume that there is an advantage in using the USB 3 with the Apple adapter. In my particular use case of transferring data from my memory card to my iPad, this uh, USB 3 card reader is the best choice for me. So we'll talk a little bit about the limitations of using external storage on iOS. Some applications will let you access the files directly within the app. Like iMovie for example, I can see the contents of the flash drive. And once you select the file, it will be imported into your local storage. So you have to keep that in mind if you're trying to use it as an expansion to your 64 gig model, it will still need the space on the onboard memory. I also tried with another video editing app called KineMaster. So in this case, I am still not able to see the files directly inside the app. So I think it's going to depend on each of the developers to adapt this new feature in iOS 13. So here in the settings where you usually get to choose where you want the documents to be stored for each of the applications, again, it will not be an option to store directly into the external storage. So that's it. I hope you found this test useful as much as I did. Thanks for watching.